Hey friends, it is April 13th and you know what that means. It is a bonus dark tale. So I find these stories all over the internet. A lot of them are creepypastas or crazy stories from Reddit. So I have an amazing one for you guys today. It is called, If You Stare Long Enough, It Will Go Away. So let's go ahead and get started and I hope you love it. So this is from Reddit in the category No Sleep. It's one of my favorite categories and some are stories, some are true life. So take this how you want, you know. And the author, their name is Happy Otter 3 which is the best name. My name on there is Electric Yogurt, which Reddit assigned it for me. So anyways, thank you so much Happy Otter for this story. Let's get started. I saw it for the first time when I was 10. I was lying in my bed, tossing and turning like usual. After about three hours of not being able to fall asleep, I decided to turn on my bedroom light and play with my toys, something I knew I wasn't supposed to do so late at night. As I rolled over to flip the switch, a cold chill ran up my spine. I hesitated to turn it on and decided to take a quick look around my room. It was dark out, which is typically how it is at 11 p.m. The only illumination in the black void came from my Spider-Man nightlight on the other side of the room next to my dresser. My gaze fell upon that area, not quite knowing why. I finally flipped on the switch. To my surprise, however, the light didn't turn on. My head began to pound in my chest. I continued to look towards the dimly lit portion of my room. It was at this time that I heard something that made me shift my gaze towards my closet. It was the sound of crying. Well, whimpering would probably be a better word for it, as the sound didn't seem to have too much emotion behind it. I slowly pulled the covers off of myself, exposing my body to the chilling fall air creeping its way through a draft under my door. I attempted to flip the switch again, but nothing happened. I was terrified. I thought about running out of my room and into my father's, waking him up and, and asking to sleep with him for the night. I quickly put that thought out of my head, however. Dad has to be up for work very early and probably wouldn't be happy by the disturbance. The whining from the closet continued, and I decided that I would go check on it. I was young, what can I say? I lifted one foot off my bed and the other quickly followed. In just a moment, I was on my feet, making my way towards the door of the closet. Just as I reached the handle and was about to turn it, the crying stopped. I just stopped. My heart was beating a mile a minute at this point. I grasped the closet door and slowly opened it. I hesitantly looked inside, but what I found wasn't what I expected. There wasn't a monster or a ghost or anything like that at all. It was just clothes. As I searched around in the closet, I noticed that my nightlight began to lose its glow. I turned my attention away from the closet and back towards the nightlight. That's when I saw it, standing behind my dresser, staring directly at me. It looked somewhat human, except for the fact that it wore no clothes and its skin was as pitch black as the night sky. It was easily six feet tall and its back curved at an unnatural angle. It had two bright white eyes, but no other features that I could see in the faint light. Its hands, or claws is probably a better term, were wrapped around the top of my dresser. I stood motionless, staring at the creature. I did not move. It just stared. I tried to scream, but no sound came out of my dry throat. I slowly made my way to the door of my room, never looking away from the creature. I turned away to find the handle and heard a noise that made my blood run cold. It was moving, slowly but surely sneaking up behind me. I quickly turned around and almost fell backwards in terror. It was right behind me. It was much taller than I expected it to be and its head almost touched the ceiling. And its lanky body stretched and contorted, showing that it was slouching. Its claws were in the air as if it was ready to attack. As I looked at it, I seemed to be frozen in place, as if trying to pretend it wasn't there at all. I had no idea what to do. If I opened the door and ran, 
It would surely get me. It was mere feet from me at the current moment. I knew it had to be fast by how quickly it got from behind my dresser to right behind me. I was breathing heavily. My heart felt like it would jump out of my chest. There was nothing I could do but stare at whatever exactly it was that was in my bedroom. I stood there for what felt like hours, trying my best not to tear my gaze from this abomination. After a very long, uncomfortable staring contest, it began to move. Lowering its claws, it slouched down even further, turning away from me and started towards the closet. It opened the door and went inside, shutting the door quietly behind it. I let out a breath that I didn't even realize I was holding. The first thing I thought to do was to try the light switch again. To my surprise, it worked. The room lit up like a savanna at sunrise. The crying noises were gone. The monster was gone. At least, I hope it was. I was too afraid to go open the closet door back up. Can you blame me? I was a little kid. I was traumatized. I left the light on the rest of the night and needless to say, I didn't sleep. My dad came into my room when the sun rose to wake me up. He was surprised to see me already awake sitting on my bed with the light on. He asked me what was wrong and I told him. He pushed it off as a nightmare. Looking back now, I can't blame him. It sounded crazy, like a kid's overactive imagination cooking up a bizarre nightmare. But it wasn't a nightmare. It was very, very real. I was scared to go to bed the next night. After a while, however, I reluctantly fell asleep. I was awoken around 1 a.m. to the same sound I heard the night before. A faint crying coming from my closet. I quickly sat up and was wide awake. I immediately went for the light switch and as I expected, it didn't work. I ran back to my bed and stared at the closet, pulling the blanket over me so that the only thing that was visible were my eyes. I stared at the closet, listening to the crying. I knew I couldn't open the door. I was smart enough to know that whatever that thing was, it was safer for me if I stayed, if it stayed in the closet. It didn't stay in the closet. Not long into my gaze upon the door, it started to budge, slowly pushing outwards and opening. When the door was about halfway open, I saw its terrifying face again. It looked directly towards the bed, and when it saw me sitting there staring back, it froze once again. The only part of it I could see was its head peering around the door, staring directly into my soul. I began to cry at the sight of it appearing again. Why was this thing in my room? What did it want from me? And most importantly, how do I get rid of it? I sat staring at the creature much longer than the previous night. As long as I stared at it, it didn't move. After what seemed like an eternity, its head slid back behind the door and out of sight, closing the door gently behind it. I was beginning to realize that if I just didn't look away, it wouldn't hurt me. So that's what I did. For months and months, the creature who I began to call, quote, the looker, visited me during each night. A few times I tested my theory and turned away from it when it appeared. Every time I would hear shuffling and it would be closer when I turned back towards it. I had gotten good at timing when to turn back. I told my dad about the looker many times, but he always just rolled his eyes. Again, I can't blame him. I began to fear the looker less and less over the course of a year until one warm August night. It was about 1245 and I was sitting on my floor playing with my toys without permission when my dad barged into my room and began yelling. He screamed at me and told me get in bed that very instant. I did. The lecture continued when I noticed the closet start to open behind him. Quote, Dad! Turn around, it's the looker. He rolled his eyes and looked behind him. It was too late. As he turned, the looker grabbed his neck and twisted his head 180 degrees. A sickening crack came from my father's body and I screamed. 
well, tried to. Once again, nothing came out. I backed up against my wall and cried, staring at the creature who I was starting to believe was harmless. It looked back at me with its cold, white eyes. After a while, it disappeared into the closet once again. When it did, I ran to my dad, grabbed his phone, and called 911. The funeral came and went, and I was sent to live with my grandmother. The looker did not follow me. Thankfully, I never saw it again. I still see a therapist after over 20 years. It's helped some, but I still see my father's lifeless body in my nightmares. I just moved into a new apartment with my dog Rocco, and as I'm lying in bed right now, I just heard crying from my closet. I think it's back. But luckily, I still know how to keep it at bay. Just don't look away. Oh my gosh, that that one, like, thinking about it, you're like, this is ridiculous. Like, how could that even happen? Like, what? I don't know. When I read it, I was like, oh my gosh. But like, I really liked the details. I really felt on edge reading it the whole time. So I was like, this, I hope this is a good one for a bonus dark tale. So that is it for today. I like to keep them nice and short, just a little fun thing and the 13th of every month. So thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed episode 44 yesterday on the SK, SK Pierce Mansion. And then join us next week for New Mexico. I almost said what it was. And then the 23rd, every 23rd, we do bonus Zodiac episodes. So tune in for that. Thank you all so much for listening. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, which Instagram's the better one to use. Um, But I also use TikTok and YouTube. Thank you again. And we will see you guys next week. Bye.